Hey yo, what is up guys? Akash here, back with another video, and today we are going to make a LoRa transmitter and a receiver kind of bridge link, and we are going to learn how this can work, what are its possibilities. It's like a basic first step into LoRa. I was earlier going to uh, make a video about this circuit, but there's a lot of wiring, there's a lot of SMD soldering and all, which I thought might not be easy for many of the audience so i got an idea of using these uh, beautiful fire beetle boards from lora so these are sc uh, stackable boards so this is the lora board this is the esp32 board and this is the oled board right now what we have in working is that as soon as we give this power this is the transmitter node you'll see i'll pop in a serial monitor over here which uh, starts uh, showing some values also this is the receiver module that is connected to the laptop that is sending all the data that it's receiving from this transmitter node this is connected to this power bank so and this receiver also blinks this led when it gets the package you can send any type of message from here uh, which is restricted in bandwidth and uh, in data size it's like 50 kilobits per second that's the beauty of lora i have done an individual uh, lora tutorial video explaining all the technical stuff you may watch it over here so let's get started with this project without any delays I order all my PCBs from glcpcb.com. They offer 10 PCBs for $2 only. They also offer quick turnaround time and can produce PCBs as fast as within 24 hours. To design PCBs, you can head over to EasyEDA and then generate Gerber files for your project. Now head over to glcpcb.com, upload your Gerber files and get the PCBs manufactured for cheap. They are currently also offering discounts on shipping. To get started with the LoRa module, DF Robot provides all the bits and pieces that you might require to get started. So for the LoRa module, you get the module itself in the package, you get two sets of headers as in this type of header and this type of header which is for stacking purposes and uh, then there's this header which you will require to put in over here. Then you get this uh, small antenna, spring antenna, you also get this uh, antenna attachment. You can use this header or this header whichever is your choice. I won't prefer this one because it will limit its use to only the top of the stack and then if you need to use an OLED display on the stack like this one with the ESP over here and that would be a problem then so this this is the module that I have already soldered I use this type of headers which weren't included I use this one and for the connection purposes I don't use this header as this would be like not very practically feasible to connect your points on top of it I used a female uh, Berg strip over here perpendicular and then I wire it up like this so that this can go on the bottom of the stack. For this module I'll probably use uh, these headers and again I'll solder this type of header on the bottom but you must remember that soldering this header is very much important because reset and chip select pins for the LoRa module are not wired. Also a uh, tip that uh, whenever you're powering any RF module you must attach the antenna otherwise if there's no antenna uh, involved the power might damage the chip so now I've soldered this module and you can see that I've used these types of headers I've also added this perpendicular female header on it uh, but before directly jumping into how this module can be used to make the project let's first learn about how uh, this is wired to an ESP32 or any other microcontroller for that matter so this uses SPI uh, bus so SPI so this is serial peripheral interface it uses pins like MOSI, MISO, SCK, chip select, reset and DIO0 so these are the different pins that are used in SPI or you can say that in this module these three pins are already broken out from this LoRa chip to the header there is this MOSI, MISO and uh, there's SCK so these three pins are directly connected to this chip but the other pins over here like, like chip select, reset, DIO0 all of those pins are broken out over here and we need to connect them manually to the digital pins so we'll see how that is done over here so if this is the LoRa module and we have 
this as the microcontrolling unit. Here we have the first three pins MOSI, MISO and SCK. These connect to the same pins over here. This goes to SCK of this MOSI and then MISO. For the ESP32, the SCK pin is the 18th pin, MOSI pin is the 23rd pin and the MISO pin is the 19th pin. So these are the GPIO numbers that we use in our code. So here we have chip select, then we have reset, then we have DIO0. Uh, there are other pins as well. Uh, so there is D DIO1, DIO2, 3, 4, 5, till 5. So we don't need those further pins. Uh, and DIO0 is also required only for receiver, not for transmitter. You must connect this in the case of receiver only. It's optional in case of transmitter. So these connections go like this, like this and like this. So the chip select will go to D4 or the 27th GPIO pin of the ESP32. D4 is in the case of the ESP32 Firebeetle board. And uh, this, the RST pin goes to the D3. That is the 26th pin. Note this, note that uh, D4, D3 will be different according to your board. I am talking about the ESP32 Fire Beetle series board. And the DIO0 in my case will go to uh, pin 13. I And I guess that is, that is D7. So that is D7. So now as these pins are already broken out and to break out these pins, I have made this type of header. So uh, this these only break out the chip select reset D4, D3 on this side and not the D0. So I'll use this module for the purpose of trans uh, for the purpose of transmission. And I have also used this module which I have broken out this jumper wire which goes to D0 pin which I'll use for reception purposes. So over here we need to connect the chip select pin and I'll uh, as I've done over in this module. So there's this red wire which goes into the reset one. So this reset pin is this last one which will go to D3. So D3 is broken out over here itself. So you can directly connect it over here. This is a really convenient way of doing it. And then we connect the chip select pin that is the green wire to the D4 that is this one. That is it for this. Now we can directly connect this to the uh, ESP32 module and so on that we'll do very soon now in this case we need to connect these wires as it is and as this module is for the receiver we need to connect the DIO0 as well so this will directly plug into the ESP32 onto pin 13 and pin 13 is D7 all the modules that we are going to use over here are the these are the couple of ESP32s a couple of LoRa boards and I only have one OLED board so I'll use this and uh, moving to the connections, I'll firstly use this as the transmitter one. So I'll put the OLED on the transmitter. I'll have to match the white corners over here. And I just have to plug it in like this. And this is the beauty of these Fire Beetle series boards from DF Robot that you have no need of wiring apart from this little bit. And uh, as this is the transmitter, I'll use this uh, module and I'll just plug this in as well. Now that is done. Moving to the receiver. Uh, as this connection is done, firstly I'll match the white corners and plug in the ESP32. Now uh, I need to put this one onto D7. There it is. Yep. And that is it. So I'll code this module first as I'll run this over a power bank and put it at some distant location. And I'll connect this to the laptop uh, after this so that I can see what packet it receives on the serial monitor. We can also do it on the OLED display. So I've added a code for the OLED display as well. You can check that out in the GitHub repository of mine. So plugging this into the computer, let's connect it. Head over to the GitHub link that I've provided in the description below. Then download the entire repository. Once the download is complete, you should extract the repository. In this repository, I have also included all the necessary libraries that you might require to run the codes. Here you have the receiver and the transmitter codes. Firstly, open the transmitter code in the Arduino IDE. While the program loads, ensure that you have connected the transmitter hardware to the computer. Once the, the code opens, head over to the tools tab, select the correct board ESP32 DEF module in my case and the correct COM port that is COM20 in my case. Once that is done, hit the upload button. Once the code gets uploaded, do the same procedure 
by connecting the receiver hardware to the computer and then burning the receiver code onto that module. So now I have coded both the modules. This one is still connected to the laptop as you will see the serial monitor pop in somewhere here. And I will, and this is the receiver unit. This is the transmitter one. So I will connect this to the power bank like this with the micro USB cable. As soon as I do that, uh, so it shows LoRa transmitter packet number five, six, and you see the blinks also over here. And also you see the packets coming in on the serial monitor. And this is how it works. You can put this display over here also. I have added those libraries and code, all that good stuff in the GitHub repository links in the description. And uh, if you do not want to use the serial monitor, you can also see the uh, the blue LED that I've programmed so that as soon as a packet comes, it blinks on and uh, till the next packet, it stays on and so on. So this is how it is working. I am I, with a range test. I'm getting like a uh, good one kilometer without line of sight with concrete walls in between without line of sight i'm sure it will reach like five kilometers and more maybe even nine to ten kilometers like i have got with the react Flora modules and these are like the same modules thanks for watching subscribe to our channel if you haven't till now hit the bell icon to get notified when we release a new video